Ooh, I guess right around now she should be about 20, mid 20s, somewhere in there, something like that. And so I've been knowing her all her life with a lot of memories, great kid. What can I say? <laughs> I think it's one of those things where it's all you know and not that you don't have a choice but you want to make your parents happy and so you do that you have fun with it and then you kind of just go with it so growing up my dad he was he coached men's basketball um, for a little bit he started coaching Lincoln Girls Middle School and then he ended up coaching the men's team for the high school so all I did was basketball um, I was in the gym on the weekends, in the summers. Um, everybody, all the staff knew me growing up because, you know, I had been around the community for so long. Um, just growing up centered around basketball. My dad also played at Wayne State University, so he had a lot of um, experience and background in basketball. So it's kind of just in our blood. And if you know my dad, then you know how he is, how he trains how he goes hard and he's a lot of people have uh, had him as a coach so um, you can kind of see how basketball was instilled in my household. Hello, I am uh, Coach Anthony Finley, basketball coach, and uh, I've uh, been working here at Lincoln High School for about uh, 25 years. I uh, moved to Ypsilanti back in 1994, been here ever since, uh, started at Eastern Michigan University and just wound up staying. I tell you, uh, from the uh, high school stage, uh, not to play uh, AAU like most kids do, she led the state in scoring, uh, you know, uh, led the track team and uh, her name still is in the gym right now for the record of the 400 in track and uh you know going to school on a full ride scholarship going to a university a major university and wind up getting her master's and now uh, in education and training uh you just can't ask for better doing it the right way always had a good work ethic uh you know without all the the extra things the kids do to like uh, get seen and uh, to make themselves marketable. She didn't have to do it, she just worked hard. Tell us about a great moment where Dominique inspired you. Me and her dad took a ride and uh, we went to go see her first college game. Man, you would have thought she was in the WNBA. I was hollering and yelling and screaming and it really was his moment, but I took it as my moment. And boy, I'm calling her name the whole time, and I was just ecstatic at the fact, man, I'm watching a kid that grew up who was just a little kid running in the gym, crying because she didn't want to run with the boys and play with them. And now she's on the college floor and weeding popcorn and hot dogs, and I'm throwing popcorn everywhere when she scores. You know, and it just was like one of the proudest moments of my life because it's like, Man, dreams like do come true. And you want to see that for every kid. I've been coaching 25 years. So, you know, you want to see that for each and every kid. But to actually see her on the floor and meet the coaches and the players, it was just like a life changing experience for me. What's different now, like compared to back then when I was in high school, I feel like social media has blown up um, a lot. Like social media, everything's recorded, everything's on the internet. And when I was coming up, I think social media kind of just started like with Instagram and getting off of Facebook and on Twitter. So like Snapchat didn't have stories and things like that. So I feel like with social media, if it would have been more in my time before I graduated, I think I could have actually gone somewhere else, but I went to college for basketball. 
Um, and I actually did do track in college as well. And I feel like I, if I could have had time, I would have did volleyball. It was super, um, it was super fun. Volleyball was one of my favorite sports. All right, so if you see right here, we're pulling up to the hill. Um, this is where we work out at. Yeah, this is the hill. I can probably see why we call it the hill. It's just a hill. Um, we go up and down a couple times. We have equipment that we use. Um, these benches actually over here. So we used to do um, jumps on these benches. There's been multiple, there's been multiple times where I was jumping up here and I came down on my shin. Hurts really bad if you don't get up enough. So a lot of memories of this bench right here, this table right here. Use that block jump. So usually we maybe with chains or bags with weights we go up. Um, we also get like this bench where we ran and we dropped the chains, run up, jumps off the hay hide like high knees things like that comb work you know moving faster in short spaces so that's pretty much it just real high intense workouts for like about 30 to 45 minutes got that in got that in so next we are going to the house that i grew up in my pretty much entire childhood there's a lot of memories there um so that's where we're gonna head to next So what was the competition like back then versus now? Um, back then the competition was actually, it was really good. You got girls from all over that would come and play to an open gym or to pick up on the court. Everybody was hungry. Everybody wanted to be the star. Everybody wanted to be the best player. Everybody thought they were the best player. So competition was really high and really heavy and it actually made the game a lot of fun and we all challenged each other to be better because that's what we wanted to be. Now I think the, the competition now is a lot more aggressive and we still have that hunger, you still have that fight, but it's more skilled and more fundamental and girls these days, they're evolving, they're dunking, they're more confident, they're standing up for, for each other, for one another, for themselves on social media, on and off the court. So now it's more like unity and more confidence. Playing against Dominique was so fun. We've been playing against each other since middle school. Back when I went to Ypsilanti West Middle School and she went to Lincoln Middle School. Um, that's where we kind of first met there in like the seventh grade and that's when we really started playing with each other. And then we both ended up being really two good girls from the same city. And we've never, um, well, we've always played with each other some way, somehow, whether it was on the same team or against each other. Um, but we always had that respect and then we always had that love for each other. Like we love each other, we always help out. Like we were willing to work out and just Dominique, like she's just, she's just Dominique. <laughs> I mean, she loves the game and the game loves her. She loves to shoot, she loves to stop and pop. She loves getting everybody involved. She loves taking control and doing what she does best and score. So you guys actually have played together? Yeah, we have um, many open gyms. Um, actually, when we were both about to go to college, we used to work out early in the morning at um, her high school with her father. So we used to do a lot of workouts. Uh, we actually played some open gyms together and we played a couple of rec teams together too. So it's been pretty fun. And every time we play together, she knows what I like to do. She knows I'm a passer. She knows that's my specialty. And so she's always going to be open. She knows to always expect the no look. And it's always going to be a bucket. It's always a great combination. It's always fun. Shout out for Dominique for even giving me this opportunity for us to reflect on playing basketball together. I mean, it's something we've always done. Like everybody always compared us to each other, but we never saw each other in that way. It's always been love. We've always respected each other's game. So huge shout out to Dominique and her family and shout out to my family as well. And to you for having me do this. So thank you. So to the right, there's this park. That's where Everybody in the neighborhood was friends. We always were all outside. Everybody knew each other. We used to play, <clears throat> when I was younger, cops and robbers on our bikes. And as a, like, as a neighborhood, and it was so many of us. That was super dope. So my house used to be this house right here. 8822. 
the house. I just saw a small. My room was in the back, so you can't see it. But I lived here for a very, very long time. Um, so that's cute to see. <laughs> All right. So now we just exit that little timeline. Um, now we're about to go to Lincoln. I did go to Redner Elementary, which is called Bishop now. But that's Lincoln. Then I went to Lincoln Middle School. I actually moved in sixth grade and I went and lived in Louisiana. So I lived in Louisiana for one year with my mom and my brother, my dad, he didn't come. So we lived in Louisiana. I went to this school in Zachary, which, I, which is outside of Baton Rouge a little bit. And it was like a real academic school. They're really, like really well known for their academics. We had to wear uniforms. So it was definitely different and it was down south. And the one thing I can say I cannot stand about down south was the bugs. about basketball though was probably my dad being my coach because it was just non-stop if you lose you got to hear something if you play bad you got to hear something and it's all the way home all the way home all the way home all the way home there would be times where I'd be crying and my mom would have to be like the middleman like what's wrong um at home because like you know he just he and if you know him then you know how he can get I'm coach Mike Foley Dominique's father, high school principal, former Lincoln High School varsity head coach. Coaching Dominique was fun. Not too many times in a person's life. As a coach, as a parent, you are actually privileged with the opportunity to coach your daughter. So it was definitely a blessing to be able to work with her athletically. We have been working on basketball and academics since she was young. So to be able to coach her at the high school level, the varsity level, was definitely a pleasure. It was difficult at times, you know, when you're coaching your own kid, you want them to do well. You have to go through this emotional roller coaster, uh, working with female athletes, me being a male, and my perspective on sports, I think at times was far greater than uh, her drive. Nonetheless, uh, we were able to work well together, and uh, I think it was very beneficial and rewarding. Yeah. Dominique played three sports. Um, I've always, with all of my kids, I've always tried to motivate them to play more than one sport. Growing up in the era that I grew up in, you could not be a one sport uh, superstar, a one sport athlete. So I'd always try to manifest in her hard work ethic and also to appreciate more than one sport because you never know where your talents or where your true blessings may come from. So she was able to compete at the varsity level as a freshman, track and field. She played varsity basketball and she played varsity volleyball as a sophomore. So to just kind of watch her mature um, into her own and see which sport she would be able to hopefully comp compete at the next level was, was a blessing. But to be able to train year round is important and not focus on one sport. The sports kind of broke themselves up. You have volleyball first and then you go from volleyball basketball, basketball to track, I think she was able to continue to develop because she never got burnt out. If she would have focused on basketball the entire time, I think that she would have been burnt out like a lot of uh, athletes are. Talk about your coaching experience and the talent you have seen come through the Lincoln community. Real good, that's a good question. Um, being able to coach at Lincoln, I started coaching within the Lincoln community at the youth age. I seen so much great talent come from there. I mean, if you guys have the time, I can we can go on for days and days and days about some of the top athletes that have come from the Lincoln area. Unfortunately, a lot of student athletes transfer from Lincoln, um, so we don't get to put the Lincoln stamp on a lot of the talent that comes through there because they all go to different places from uh, IMG, fat kids leave to go to some of the uh, more urban inner city schools. It's just been a great opportunity though, a, a great privilege to watch these kids in this area grow. I've had my, my coaching experience ranges from high school. I started out as a middle school coach, then I coached high school. I was the strength and conditioning coach at Adrian College. I had an opportunity to coach at the collegiate level. And then I was blessed with the opportunity to coach in the NBA. At that time, they called it the D League. I believe it's the G League now. So I was able to work with the um, Indiana Mad Ants. That was a great opportunity uh, to work with their developmental program, helping develop athletes and recruit for various tryout sessions. So 
again, being able to coach in a multifaceted, growing community was, was definitely a privilege. And as I preach to my kids not to be one sport athletes, I was never a one sport coach. I coached football, I coached track and field at the varsity level. Um, I switched over to girls basketball after being the boys basketball for eight years. The boys basketball hit um, head coach. Andrew Dillon. Andrew was a man, Andrew was a beast. I tell you, I had always said when Andrew Dillon left Lincoln, that was gonna be time for me to leave. And when he left, that was the last district title that we won. He was a great athlete, but beyond being a great athlete, he was a great leader. He was a coach on the floor. Um, and again, he was similar to Dominique. He was a three-sport athlete. He dominated at every sport, but his attitude, his drive, his work ethic, that's what made him such a great athlete. Being able to coach him was definitely a pleasure. Um, I think that, in my opinion, from the time that I was at Lincoln, as far as best, best athlete, three-sport athlete, him, Chris Lee, guys like Chuck Reed, those guys were definitely uh, some, some of the top athletes that I've seen come through that program. Um, so it, it, it was more than a pleasure to coach him. You know, he was a part of our district championships. We won back to back when he was there. He did great things in football. Um, but again, co coaching a kid that has that type of drive and attitude, that's what we look for as coaches. And now to see him back at the high school coaching is definitely refreshing. Well, I, I thank you guys for this opportunity to shoot a documentary. I've always believed in investing in people. And hopefully, when I'm long gone, somebody will pull this old archive out and remember good old Coach Foley uh, and some of the contributions that he had at Lincoln, not only coaching his own kids, but being able to uh, effectively affect the lives of others. Um, and I truly believe that athletics and academics, when they work together, can be very beneficial um, and more than receiving scholarships, so many life lessons are, are learned there. So I thank you guys for this opportunity, um, and I look forward to w watching this documentary. Thank you. I'm Chris Westfall, I'm the athletic director at Lincoln High School in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Um, been here since 2012, and I'm also the football coach, and I've been uh, the football coach since 2007. Well, so improvements have come in, in bits and pieces, and we started with the mentality that every facility here should look as good as we can make it look. And so we started with small things, cleaning up the gym, refinishing floors. It all led into a, a proposal to the community in 2018 for an athletic bond, a bond that actually did a lot of things. It put roofs on schools and gave a, a, every kid in the district a computer. But it also made a significant commitment to athletic facilities. So, for example, the building we're sitting in is about $12.5 million indoor facility that, that very few people around the country have. This 118,000 square foot facility is football, soccer, indoor track. Any, any outdoor sport that you play on grass, we can play inside now. Baseball and softball, batting cages. We're also, we're also trying to capitalize on it as a community facility so community members can come in and purchase memberships to work out in the workout room to run on the track to you can bring your son or daughter in to hit the cage so this has been sort of the crown jewel of that athletic improvement but it wasn't the only thing we did in that bond if if we were able to walk 100 yards out the the wall here the indoor facility there's two new baseball and two new softball fields we turfed the football stadium for lacrosse and football and soccer. We built a new weight room inside. We built a new cheer room and wrestling room inside. And really tried to look at everything we can do to give kids in our area pride in the school and the community. And then maybe most importantly, a chance to do what other places can. You know, we, we try to provide kids with the opportunity to be successful by, you can't, there's no excuse not to work full time here. We got the, play, we got the place to do it in. So uh, we're very proud of all those changes. I'd like to thank Dom and those girls at the time that I was a young AD and uh, thankful that they lived through us because we screwed things up by half the time. But I just remember a lot of fun and a lot of joy. They they had the most successful season a girls basketball team's ever had. And and for a kid that was such a dynamic scorer, was outgoing and friendly and good to kids. And uh, I think she did a great job of being a leader for our female athletes here. And it's something that has been a major focus that we continue to work on now with uh, trying to bring the girls basketball program along, the soccer program along, uh, the volleyball program along that 
um, especially through like things like our weight program. We got a great female strength coach, trying to make sure that girls feel like they belong in this athletic world that uh, historically they don't always feel that they belong in. So she was a big help to that. And uh, the fact that she's back here now as a teacher, uh, I think is just a great sign of her ability to lead and, and been, she was positive all the way through it. And so um, was, was a joy to be around. Probably the end of the the end of the season, I think, in her junior year, all the way up to their last playoff loss, which was a fantastic back and forth game. Girls basketball across the state struggles in a lot of places here included to get spectators. And the fact that, that, that people started to come to the game, started to have a, a fan presence was, was the biggest thing. So that, that end of the season run really was the stuff that I remember the most. If we can show how proud we are of this place and what we've done here, it, in a way, you're never done here. It's always an ongoing process. So, the the community support that's that's that passed the bond that that is bringing this community together. You know, one of the funny things about Lincoln is there's no town, right? Ypsilanti's to our north, Milan and Belleville are nearby, Ann Arbor's yeah. nearby. In in a sense, the school is the town. So. If we can bring a sense of pride to this community and the facilities and the programming and the things that kids can be involved with, that's probably the biggest source of pride because you're never done. You're always building and working and, and hoping that uh, athletics can be something that the community can build around. God, I sound cheesy, but I think it's true. That's all that I knew growing up. So basketball was everything. I mean, I did that since I was little in the in my driveway getting better in the little Lincoln League when I was younger that's all that I knew so it is kind of weird when you actually graduate college and it's over We are here in my second grade classroom here at Childs Elementary um, in the Lincoln District. Right now I'm here answering a couple questions um, and we are currently getting ready to go on to winter break. So during the off season I played volleyball in the fall, uh, track and field in the spring. Um, I definitely think that I could have been better um, if I would have locked in and focused on just basketball or any of those sports for that fact. I actually did run, um, do track and field in college outside of basketball. So I definitely think within any of those three sports, if I would have just focused and keyed in on one, and that's all that I did that I could have um, been better. But I chose to do basketball, and it took me great places. It got me to college, graduated, and now I'm here today, so I can't complain about it. So my college basketball experience, I would probably do it again. College was college itself is fun. Um, being I was three hours away from home, so Walsh was the perfect distance from home. It wasn't too close, and it wasn't too far. Being three, like three and a half hours, and it was kind of a small, tight knit kind of community. It was a private school, but um, it was Division two, so we played the schools like Wayne State, Grand Valley, Saginaw Valley. Ashland, that was, we were in the GLIAC for the first two years that I went there, then we transferred to the GMAC because some of our other sports teams couldn't keep up, but we were really competitive. We were really good. We did great things at Walsh. So great college experiences. The best one for me is my teammates. Um, those memories that I have with them are just, they'll live on forever. And sometimes I wish that I could go back and we still laugh and think about certain situations or things that happen, but Running out there with those girls every day it was like we were dying. I, I, I wouldn't take back that experience. Top three songs on your pregame playlist. <laughs> so, Future, Monster, Nuck If You Buck. <laughs> I don't even know who sings that. Um, and then the third one, who else used to bump in the locker room? K-Camp, Slum Anthem. 
If you were to pick three of your uh, three on three squad, who's on your team? Three, three v three. Yep. It Steph, don't matter who. Steph Curry for sure. Shooter. Okay. Wait, am I a part of three? Yep. So me, Steph, and KD. Okay. Blacktop game. You plus four. Who you picking? Okay. Blacktop game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Blacktop. Um. Again, Steph Curry. So it'd be Steph, me. Um. We could put Paige Bukers on there. She a hooper. Um. That's three. LeBron, just cause he's LeBron. How many is that? Four. Mm -hmm. And so one more. Um, hmm. I'm gonna have to go with. I'm thinking Dame Lillard. If you could relive a game, which one would it be? If I could relive a game, I would probably relive. I probably relive. It was a game. Oh, you know what? OU was a good one. We played Ohio University. Um, I think I had like 18. I was like three for four. I was hooping low key, so and you know that's a good school. They didn't have no bones in there, so that was a pretty pretty fun game. Five dinner guests, dead or alive. <laughs> this was stumble. Uh, five dinner guests. Okay, so Brent Fias, that's my guy. Like that's like I love him. Like that's my favorite. Um, Drake because I feel like Drake just. His mindset is probably so different. So, okay, Brent Fias, Drake, Future. I gotta talk to Future. I gotta talk to him. Um, Drake, Brent Fias, Future. Um, I would also wanna chop it up with Tupac. And then, like, a basketball player or something. So, maybe LeBron. You see how you know? How do you deal with all the haters on a daily basis? What do you do? How does it feel? To know you have money, yet people want to clown you. Like, how does it feel? How does it feel to be one of the best ever? All right, so if you made it this far, thank y'all for watching this. Shout out to everybody that's involved, Finn, Westfall, my dad, Micah. Shout out to all y'all. Shout out to everybody that's viewing it. Appreciate you. Shout out to the producers. <laughs> Shout out to the producers, you know, put this thing together. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's been it's 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 been an experience, and I'm excited to see um, where things go. And I, I would like to announce that I am coaching here at Lincoln now. Um, seventh grade girls basketball starts somewhere small. I'm excited. to talk with you this evening about being hungry. Somebody said, I'm hungry. <laughs> You've got to be hungry. So every day I was working to develop myself. And that's what you must do. What does it take to be a great athlete? Playing fundamentally sound. Having chemistry with those around you. Taking initiative when it is necessary. We spoke with a lot of individuals from Washtenaw County that gave us their insight on what it takes to be a great athlete. Here's what they had to say. I'm Lucy Alfaro and I ran cross country, indoor and outdoor track and field at Siena Heights University. While I was at Siena, I was named captain, all academic, all decade runner, back-to-back -back outdoor track team conference champions, part of the national qualifying team for cross country, and also a two-time national qualifier in the marathon for track. And I think what it takes to be a great athlete is not only setting short and long-term goals for yourself, but also dedication and passion, making sure you do whatever you can to get ahead of the competition. Hi, I'm Peyton Richardson, and I played volleyball at Ann Arbor Huron High School, and then I played collegiate volleyball at South Dakota State University. And I'm here to tell you that the person that thinks they can and the person that thinks they can't are both right. It starts with the mindset. 
I was an undersized middle playing at the Division One level, and I had a great career. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do anything. You got to push yourself, you got to work hard, and you have to believe in yourself. Trust God, trust the process. Enjoy the game you're playing. Hey, everybody. It's Trey Hayward. I'm a linebacker, and I'm going to play football at the University of Arizona. I just wanted to give you a little insight of what it takes to be a great athlete. Uh, Growing up in Ypsilanti, Michigan, you got to have some type of determination and perseverance just off of the environmental circumstances that you're in. Uh, I think you just have to be very determined to better yourself, better your family, and put God first before anything. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't be here now. So I give all the glory and praise to the Lord, and I play football through him. So that's what I think it takes to be great. Just continue the faith, love what you do play hard what's up y'all this is tyler mabry tight end for the seattle seahawks um i grew up in washington county i lived there for six years from fifth grade to junior year of high school i just want to let y'all know just chase your dreams don't let nobody put no limitations on you because you never know where you can go sometimes i used to put limitations on my dreams because people ahead of me said i couldn't do it they said you couldn't go d1 you can't be in the nfl but you the one who determines your dreams it's really you versus you at the end of the day What's up, guys? It's KJ Osborne Robinson from the Minnesota Vikings. What does it take to be a great athlete? What does it take to make it to the next level? You need the four Ds. Desire, discipline, determination, and dedication. Uh, to be a great athlete and you know, to be great at anything, if you want to be great, your work ethic is going to have to be through the roof, higher than, than anyone's. Um, that's what it's going to be taken if you, if you truly want to be great, along with the four Ds. But I'm telling you, um, you gotta have a, a, a work ethic that's that's through the roof. Um, you know, you gotta be your own self critic. Um, you gotta have a good mindset. You gotta you gotta want it, which it, which comes in, in one of those four D's. Uh, a good coach told me once, never worry about how much work you gotta do to get to your goal. Just do all the work it takes, and then when you're done, look back and say and be proud of all the work that you did to get there. Um, that's my advice to you guys. Um, Y'all stay safe. It's all love. You heard their stories and the work it took for them to get to where they wanted to be. Maya Petticourt, Demetrius Sims, and Dominic Foley. Never let anyone put limitations on what you can and cannot do. Some people say those things because they have not got there, athlete or no athlete. One thing you should know about the journey, it's not where you go, but it's what you do when you get there. My name is Landon Miller, an Ypsilanti native, and thanks for watching this talk series.